Hello and welcome to module 5. In this section of videos now we're going to be focusing our discussion on these things called discrete variables. Specifically though we're going to be looking at discrete probability distributions. So what are these? Well, first of all, I'm going to hope that you remember from the first module when we were talking about different types of data. And if you recall, when we were having that discussion, the point was made that different types of data that contain different amounts of information, they have to be analyzed, they have to be handled in a specific way, depending on the type of variable that they are. So one of the distinctions, of course, we made was discrete variables and continuous variables. So a discrete variable, these are things that exist really in whole numbers. So uh, something like you know, a number of customers, uh, number of TVs sold, um, number of cars, I, I don't know, I'm making things up on the fly. These types of things, they're non-divisible, they exist in, in the whole numbers. As opposed to continuous variables, distance, time, weight, uh, etc. So, to deal with discrete variables, we're going to look at a handful of specific probability distributions. What is a probability distribution, you might be asking? It's effectively uh, a distribution of probabilities that a variable can take for different values of that variable. So let's just say, as a simple example, we look at um, the different colors cars uh, that are in the parking lot if I if I look out my window so I have uh, I have green I have purple <laughs> okay maybe not a purple car but who cares <laughs> it's a color of a car and a red car and so I have uh, maybe there's five cars ten cars uh, ten cars and another five cars whatever so here we've got a distribution uh, of, of these different types of different colors of cars so if I wanted to put together a probability distribution well here this would be an example of something that we call an empirical probability distribution where I'm going to use what is called the relative frequency method uh, to calculate the probabilities that if I were to just reach out and pick one car at random, what's the probability that it would be a green car, a purple car, a blue car, a red car? So if I look at these numbers, I have 10, 20, I have 30, 30 different cars, okay? So I can actually draw this as a histogram, right? What We've looked at graphical summaries of data before. Here's green, purple, blue, and red. And if I calculate the frequencies, the probabilities, we're going to use this notation f of x, which is going to be stand for the probability associated with each of these different values. Well, this is going to be 5 out of 30, 10 out of 30, 10 out of 30, and 5 out of 30. And of course, those are all going to sum to 1, which, as we'll see, is one of the defining characteristics. Uh, of a discrete probability distribution is that they all must add up to one. And then I can dr I can graph those. So there's 5 out of 30 for the green cars. There's 10 out of 30, 10 out of 30, and 5 out of 30 again for the red cars. So these each give me a probability that corresponds to the likelihood that if I draw one car at random, that's the probability that it will be one of those colors. Okay, so that's the, one of the easier um, pr discrete probability distributions that we're going to look at. Now I'm going to go through a few others, but probably in less detail because this is a long chapter and I don't want this introduction to, to drag on too, too much. So in addition to the empirical distribution, which uses the relative frequency method that we'll talk about what this means exactly. Uh, so the relative, dis uh, the empirical distribution, in addition to this one, we are also going to be looking at the bivariate probability distribution. I'm going to use shorthand, bivariate probability distribution. And so this is a distribution that we use to, to analyze the behavior of how two variables may interact uh, with one another. So we can uh, consider, let's say, uh, job satisfaction. 
and this is rated on a scale, let's say one, two, three, four, five, job satisfaction and uh, pay grade. So we have different levels of pay grade A, B, and C. And you know, we can do a survey and ask people, okay, you're in pay grade A, what do you rate your job satisfaction? And maybe 20 people are unhappy uh, at that in that pay grade and we have uh, I don't know 15 happy here 30 happy here 10 and 12 I don't know so then we can fill in this table of information and we can calculate what is called the bivariate probability distribution which allows us to look at how these two variables may be uh, related to one another we can even actually use these to look at something as, as complex and perhaps as interesting as um, financial stock portfolio diversification. So how do specific stocks uh, in, a, in a portfolio, how do they vary relative to each other? Because maybe I want to manage my risk. I don't want to be too heavily exposed to any one particular stock. So how can I get a mix of stocks based on how they might vary against one another uh, to minimize or at least mitigate my exposure to the volatility in the market. So that's another one that we'll look at, the bivariate distribution. The other one is going to be the binomial probability distribution. So the binomial probability distribution, this one is one where uh, the, the variable can take one one value or another. It's either a success or it's a failure. So so we'll define whatever our variable might be as either success or failure. So I one of the exercises that we'll do is uh, looking at the, the, the gender of students walking into a classroom as we sit and wait for a class to, to, to begin. So we can define, okay, here's a success and here's a failure. And let's say a success, well, if I'm a a young male student, maybe I think a success is, or another female just walked into the room. So there's a, a success, we'll call that a female enters the room. A failure, we'll call as a male walks into the room. And I'll have some probability that corresponds to, to that. So maybe I know that there's, I don't know, 40% of the student population is female. So I'll have a probability for that, which means the probability of a male entering would be just the complement of that. So then we can answer questions maybe more applied than, than this, but we can look at, okay, out of the next 10 people who walk into the room, what's the probability that four of them will be female or eight of them will be female or at least three of them will be female or something like this. So we're looking at a distribution where each of these events are completely independent of one another. And that's important because that's gonna come up in another, uh, another distribution. So they're completely independent, uh, meaning that if a female walks into the room, that has no impact on the gender of the next individual to walk into the room. Okay, and another one, moving on quickly, we'll look at the Poisson distribution. This is a probability distribution that allows us to calculate probabilities of a certain number of events occurring within an interval. So something like within an interval of time. So if I'm looking at a one hour interval, what's the probability that over the next hour I have six students knock on my door looking for help? What's the probability that in the next hour we have uh, 12 customers show up at the till? What's the probability that over the next hour I have 30 cars pull up at my drive through window? these types of questions. So we're looking at a, still a discrete variable, uh, but specifically uh, the number of, of successes, if you will, or the number of events over some specific interval. The last one is going to be the hypergeometric distribution. This one is very much related to the binomial probability distribution with one major exception. In the hypergeometric probability distribution, uh, events are no longer independent. So uh, the result of a, this, if, if in one period we experience a success, that has an impact on the probability of, of seeing a success 
in subsequent uh, trials. So this turned out a little bit longer than I wanted. This is a long chapter. We're going to cover a lot of material. Uh, a few of these different discrete probability distributions. Uh, it's an interesting section. There's a lot of material to cover. So I hope that uh, the, the problems and the exercises that I've put together uh, will be somewhat interesting and uh, you'll, you'll manage to crunch through these, these exercises uh, without too, too much uh, uh, effort. Okay, thank you so much for watching uh, and I, I hope you'll enjoy the videos uh, to follow. Okay, thanks.